So what we have in front of us is a collection of parts to hopefully prevent what happened during our last track session. And if you don't remember what that was, here's a short clip to remind you of what exactly happened during our first track outing with the K-Swap CRX. Okay, so what exactly occurred that uh, caused us to need to put together this collection of parts? Well, after speaking with Will Wood and uh, looking at um, the fluid, it turns out it was a thermal transfer issue where the fluid in the calipers just boiled, so it got overheated. And you may say, well, then use better brake fluid. Well, this is what was in there modal 600 um it's a good it's good brake fluid should work but you know we're putting a lot of demand on the braking system so we need to do a little bit better job of managing that heat uh, one way is through the use of brake ducts and um hoses it's just there's a anybody familiar with these little cars there's just not a ton of room under there to run brake duct cooling hose um you know, you could get maybe a two inch in there and it's just not going to move a lot of air. <clears throat> I have reached out to Honed Performance about their scoops. Uh, they've told me that they are using it on their sister, uh, I think it's an 85 Civic hatchback. Um, so I'm waiting for more on that. But anyways, uh, what we came up with is this solution. So the first parts are up here. We're going to upgrade from a one piece rotor to a two piece rotor. And what we've got is the top hats, and this is to go along with the Fast Brakes 11 inch kit. So these are the top hats. And then these are the rotors. And you'll notice that these are um, slotted, and it's their extreme performance brake rotors for professional motorsports. So apparently, according to them, it's a different iron content uh, able to manage the heat better. And that's the benefit of a two-piece rotor is <clears throat> the aluminum wicks away heat and transfers heat very quickly. So it'll limit how much heat transfers into things like your wheel seals, uh, your bearings, uh, but it'll also get that heat out of the, the brake system better and help with that process. So this is one piece of the puzzle, obviously. The other piece is that... Um, they advise that I need to upgrade my uh, pistons in my calipers to their thermal lock piston. And what exactly is a thermal lock piston? Well, this is a thermal lock piston. It's actually a two-piece piston. You can see that other layer that's clipped in there. And according to them, it reduces heat transfer from the brake pad to the caliper, and most importantly, your fluid, by up as little as, at a minimum of 25%. So they've seen higher, but at a minimum, you're gonna get 25% reduced heat transfer. Um, to do this, <clears throat> I had to get you know some, up, some new seals, and they also recommended, since I boiled it that badly, to go ahead and rebuild the calipers completely. So I also got the seals for um, the transfer between the two halves. So this will all do this piece. The other thing I got is some titanium shims, EBC cells, titanium shims. Um, that's what these are. So you put your titanium shims behind the brake pads and uh, that also then reduces. And some of the data I've seen shows anywhere between 25 and 30% reduction of transfer. Um, when using titanium shims. So between <clears throat> the shims, I know you, don't, you can't add it up and say, well, 25 and 25 is 50% reduction, but um, we're gonna get some reduction over 25% by using two of these together. I know people that race that have actually doubled up and put two um, pieces of titanium shim behind their pads to help with heat transfer. So we're gonna do that to help with the, the thermal transfer as well. They also recommended putting some anti-knockback springs 
uh, in there. If you're familiar with what an anti-knockback spring does, or if you're not familiar, basically sits behind, uh, nests up in that little nub right there, sits behind the piston, and it just keeps the pistons pushed out. Um, if you've ever been on the track and you go into a turn and it feels like you've got a dead spot in your pedal before anything happens, and then suddenly you've got your pedal, it's because things are flexing and pushing your pistons and your pads back. And uh, that's kind of helps with that. You'll see a lot of uh, professional racers even uh, going into turns, they'll take their left foot and just tap on the brakes oh so slightly. And what it is is just re you know getting that those pistons back in place so that as soon as they mash on the brakes, the uh, pads are in contact and the pistons are in contact with the pads and able to give full braking. Um, so these are the pieces we're also going to go. So again, this is what I, the fluid I was using before, the 600 modal, upping that now to the 700 modal. Um, both are dot .4 uh, fluids. Um, this one just has a higher uh, temperature. Now, one of the things you got to know when you start using these kind of fluids, they do tend to suck up moisture a little bit more. Luckily, here in Arizona, it's pretty dry, but um, you know you need to bleed your brakes a little bit more often when you start getting into those types of fluids. <clears throat> so, all of this together should help us control the heat. And then to know what our heat is doing, we've got this, and this is a paint that you put on your, the ends down here. If you've ever seen it used, you paint the bottom of, of edge of the rotor and it changes colors. Um, so you know what the actual temperature of the rotor is. And where that comes in handy is then you can match it to your pad. So if you know the temperature that your rotors are getting to, then you can make sure your pads are appropriately matched because you don't want to run a pad that can't handle the heat but at the same time, you don't want a pad that is running cold, um, not getting enough heat because it won't perform well either. So uh, that's what we've got. So first step is we've got to build these, the rotors, and then take the calipers off and rebuild those, put these pistons in, and uh, give everything a look over, make sure those, those pads are in good condition that are on there now. They're, they're Hawk pads. I don't know why they wouldn't be, but we'll double check those as well. So uh, more in just a minute as we uh, start to build stuff. Okay, so the rotors are assembled. I uh, loctited and torqued the bolts per the spec and also safety wired them. I admit I have never done that before. Um, that is, it's a, it's a bit of a forearm workout to do it. And, uh, but, and just that added a little bit of security to know that, uh, things aren't going to come apart on you. So now that those are together and done, can move on to rebuilding the calipers. Okay. All back together. Uh, more or less. I still do need to bleed the brakes. But, uh, yeah, everything's together. You can see the uh, paint. I tried to line it up with the Willwood logo so I know where to look for it uh, later. Um, only real changes I had to make uh, with this kit was the offsets are a little different. Those other rotors were for a Corrado. These are specifically Honda rotors from Willwood. Um, so I had to redo the bracket spacing and just how those spacers were set up, but, uh, yeah, so we will see. I did also discover, and I'll put a photo up of it here, that, uh, the pads on the trailing edge of the one pad on the passenger side looked like a little chunk came out of it. So, um, might need to go up to, uh, and they're pretty glazed, might need to go up to a higher temp pad. These are HT10s, Hawk HT10s, and may need to go to the Hawk DT60s. They have a little higher temp um, and get really good reviews. So we'll look into that and see, give Hawk a, a ring Monday uh, and see what they say about it. But uh, yeah, we will find out here next weekend as next weekend's the next event. And uh, it's 
at a track here local called Wild Horse Pass. Run on that track before, but not in this configuration. It's one of the longest and fastest configurations that they have. So get some video of that and share that next weekend. Anyways, we'll report back on how this all helps, or hopefully it does help. <laughs> but uh, that's it for now, and uh, we'll talk to everybody later.